Minister, uh, last October, 19th of October, I raised the issue of the need to give access to the Arcambi drug, drug, sorry, the Arcambi drug to cystic fibrosis, fibrosis patients. I made a point that cystic fibrosis per head of population, uh, it's, we have the highest number of people with that condition. Uh, we should be at the vanguard in terms of research and new drug um, technologies. Now, since um, I raised it last, I made my way to meet Gillian McNulty, um, who is a person with CF, who's been on our CAMBI for um, about three years and three months. And it's, it is worth one's while to meet her uh, and to hear firsthand the dramatic and transformative impact the drug or can be has had on her life. Uh, we can look at all the stats, we can look at all of that, but when you actually meet a person, and one stunning statistic, for the last two and a half years, she's been in hospital for only 10 weeks, and that was due to the swine flu. Before that, before she went on or can be, she was in hospital eight to nine months every year. Now that is her testimony to me. She has met the researcher one of the lead researchers in Washington. This is a drug that has been 20 years in the pipeline, uh, with obviously billions spent in terms of, of bringing it to fruition. Point being that there's been an attempt in recent times to talk down the effectiveness of the drug, and that is wrong. The leak last week to the Sunday Business Post has been described by the Cystic Fibrosis Ireland as heartless, disgraceful form of communication by the HSE to people uh, with cystic fibrosis. And it was disgraceful and it was heartless, but it's part of a certain agenda that seems to be about talking down the drug, talking down its effectiveness. If it was so ineffective, why would the HSE spend 25 to 26 weeks negotiating with the company? There are issues with cost, not denying that, but let us accept that this drug has impact. This drug is effective in terms of lung function, in terms of weight gain, in terms of quality of life, in terms of independence. And Gillian McNulty has said all that to me, but not I, you, don't, you don't have to take my word or even her word for it. I mean, cystic fibrosis in its open letter, Ireland to the minister uh, makes that point. And they're very disappointed at the degree to which the acknowledged international research is being uh, d dismissed in many ways um, by uh, the HSC and by others there. And they reference Professor Stuart Elborn, uh, who's in Brompton, which is a lead hospital in, in CF treatment. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, who all point to the extraordinary impact that the drug is having uh, and how exciting it is in terms of not just short term, but long term Time impact up, on the conditions. Minister, what I want to put to you is this. Uh, first of all, will the government um, step up and intervene in terms of ensuring uh, that this drug is made available and will they ensure that there's no more talking down the effectiveness of the drug for people with thank CF? You Deputy <laughs> Minister. To, to, to thank the, the Deputy for, for raising this question, I think it is an issue of considerable concern, particularly for sufferers, but uh, also I think you know, Minister Harris has made it very clear that he wants to make progress on, on this issue, and there is no uh, attempt by government to talk down uh, the benefits of, of this. Indeed, uh, other Ministers have met with families directly affected and are very aware of, of the concerns. Uh, however, the process of approval of a drug of this nature has been taken out of the political process, as, as you know. Uh, we have decided, uh, as an Oireachtas, that this would be decided based on the medical evidence, and we've appointed those to be expert. And I think, as you rightly said in your own comments, uh, the effectiveness and the cost have to be both considered, uh, and we do have to look at that. And I think you know, the NCPE, who have an expertise in this area, have been very clear that they view that this company is not approaching this in the proper way, is not showing sufficient concern for patients' needs in the approach it is taking to pricing of this particular product. There have been intense uh, discussions between uh, the, the authorities here, the HSC, and the company to seek to uh, get agreement. 
it's not without uh, note that none of the other governments who have sought to find agreement have been able to reach agreement. Canada, Australia, other countries have not been able to reach agreement with this company. And the Minister for Health has taken the, the step of aligning himself with those other countries so that we could uh, form a group together to get a proper and decent outcome for patients who are suffering from this condition, uh, some of whom can very significantly benefit from this product. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I think the Minister Harris is acutely aware and he is not only continuing to press the, the, the work that's done here, but he's seeking to get the cooperation across other governments and ministers of health who are in a similar position, seeking to get a good outcome for their patients. Uh, it has to be brought within a, a, an affordable uh, level. And the NCPE have to be in a position to show that this treatment will be effective at the price uh, that the drug is, is being provided. And I think that work is, is, is very intensively being pursued, as I say, and the Minister has taken uh, the unusual step of seeking to get a coalition of other governments to approach this company in a concerted way so that we can uh, get assurance that this uh, product, which obviously has hu hugely beneficial effects for some of the sufferers from cystic fibrosis, can be made available. So just to assure you uh, that everything uh, will be done, but it will be done within the legal provision that we've all agreed uh, here in this House. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Deputy Martin. Well, that entirety, Minister, because up to very recently, the Department of Public Expenditure demanded uh, the right to sanction uh, any new drugs, and the Minister of Health was, uh, had to go before the Cabinet. Uh, that was the position. Um, uh, and I know that up to very recently. Um, even up to the Pembro drug recently in terms of the cancer, uh, new drug that came along. Professor Stuart Elborn has said, Minister, long-term follow-up data has indicated that this treatment can prevent disease progression. Initially, we were able to show that you can make people a bit better. Now we're seeing exciting and reassuring long-term improvement. We hope this will lead to a further rethink about the long-term benefits. I'm really excited about the therapy and also the pipeline of other powerful drugs that could get us closer to a cure. We should be leading this. We have the highest number of CF patients per capita in the world. We should be leading in terms of new technologies uh, and in terms of clinical trials and in terms of engaging with the industry, not in a reactive mode, you, not in a reactive mode. Ginny McNulty has said to me, she is convinced she would not be here without this drug. She simply would not be here. It's her assessment of the situation. Um, and I take that seriously. Thank you. And I think there's a lot of medical evidence here that has not come to the fore, and there has been an attempt to talk it down. Because I believe the context of the discussions would change if there was an acceptance that this drug was effective and was an impactful therapy for people with CF. Uh, and I'm glad the Minister has at least confirmed that much today, because being no, be, be under no illusion, Time is up, the leak Thank last you. Sunday was to send a message it wasn't going to happen. That's what the leak to the, to the Sunday Business Post was about. Decision taken. Thank you, Deputy. That's why it was leaked, Thank and I think we need to reverse that Thank and you. get to the front line and Deputy get to the Thomas vanguard of new technology. Sorry. I apologise, I come for it. Thank you. Uh, I can assure you, firstly, that the, 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 that the, uh, the Minister is absolutely at the front line. Yes. But the, the difficulty here has been that the, the technology assessment has shown uh, that at the price that the drug is demanding, it's not medically cost effective. And that's been found not just in Ireland, but in Australia, in Canada, in England and Scotland. And each of the all of those countries are having difficulty with this company, getting a, a, a reasonable pricing of the product. And that has been confirmed by the approach, <coughs> the technical work done here. <coughs> so the minister is taking the lead, as, as you rightly ask. He is taking the lead. He's seeking to build a coalition between those bodies so that each country can work together to try and get a sensible outcome. Because none of those countries have been able to approve it on their reimbursement code either because of the high price that being charged. And they all recognize its, its benefits but they haven't been able to approve it. And I think that's what we need to get from this company.